What's up guys, it's Patricia from Tarantula Heaven and today we are going to talk about how to make really great enclosures for your tarantulas and how to make sure that you have all the bases covered. So um, a few weeks ago I did do a video about tarantula enrichment as far as providing them with things that can kind of enrich their environment, but this is a little bit different. This is basically, you know, the basics of what does your tarantula need uh, especially when you're first getting started. Your first tarantula is the hardest just because you don't really know all the things that you're going to need. And um, even when you do tons of research, you can always be surprised and like leave something out. So it can be pretty overwhelming at first, uh, especially because there's just so many things to consider. And, you know, a tarantula is just such a different creature than most other animals. So when you're first getting into the hobby, um, unless maybe you've kept similar animals or reptiles, um, it is it is a bit different to think about. Um, as far as, you know, needing to take care of things like humidity and temperature, things that cats and dogs don't really need. So we're going to get into it, and uh, I'm going to name like a bunch of things, and I'm also going to link to a blog post that I link to specific products and pictures so that you will know exactly what I'm talking about because it can be a little hard to understand from the video. But anyway, let's get down to it. Now, one of the first things you want to think about is where you're going to get these products. I personally made the mistake of not only getting my tarantula from a local pet store, but I also got my tank and everything I needed at the local pet store too, which of course resulted in me getting tons of bad information and me purchasing products that were overpriced and that I didn't even really need. So I wasted a lot of money that way and I'm going to make sure that you do not do the same. So um, I actually, now I prefer to go on Amazon because there's a lot of variety. Um, and I do find that the, the prices are cheaper. Um, my other preference is to also go to like an actual exotic shop because they have specialized equipment. Um, it's going to be well made and uh, high quality. So, um, you know, if you're looking for cheaper options, definitely Amazon is good, especially if you have a Prime membership because you don't have to pay shipping and it gets there super fast. Um, but if not, try to go to like an exotic store or a convention or something where you can actually talk to like professionals and people who know what they're talking about. Because um, if you go to a pet store, a lot of times these people, it's not their fault, they're not trained, but um, they don't really make an effort to learn about tarantulas or tarantula care. So you can be misled and possibly make bad, um, costly decisions that could harm your wallet or your tarantula. So that's my advice on where to get products. And of course, care requirements do depend on your spider, um, whether your tarantula is an adult, a teenager, juvenile, or sling, or a baby. Um, so the following recommendations that I'm going to talk about right now are going to be for older tarantulas, or you know, at least mature tarantulas, and then I will get to slings at the very end. So the first thing that an adult tarantula needs is a tank, an enclosure. Um, so this will depend on whether your tarantula is a, what is called a terrestrial or an arboreal. So terrestrials are ground dwelling, arboreal are the ones that climb on trees and are more of a vertical spider. Um, so basically for a tank, you want something that's either um, going to be like acrylic, glass, or plastic, depending on how fancy you want to get. Ground dwelling tarantulas will basically need a tank that's not so high. It can be a little bit wider though, so think of like a landscape type of tank. And this is because these tarantulas are not supposed to climb, despite the fact that Spidey loves doing that right now. Um, their bodies are not really made for that. They like to dig and burrow, so you do not want to get them a tank that's really high because they can get hurt. Um, and then in comparison, if you have a tree-dwelling spider, you want to get a um, tank that's more portrait style so that they can actually climb. And then of course with that tank, you need a lid. Um, as far as the lid goes, I caution against mesh screens. Um, hopefully you can get either an acrylic, acrylic lid with your tank or something like that just to make it easier. Um, you can also make your own lid, um, but I just got to make sure that there's holes in it. I, I do caution against mesh lids. I myself use a mesh lid, but I have a spider proofing method um, where I tape up the lid. And I talk about that in my tarantula guide, which I'll link to below um, as far as a tutorial on that. But um, the thing with the mesh lids is that the ground dwelling spiders especially love to climb their tanks and um, they like to, they sometimes get stuck on the lid um, if they decide to go upside down and pretend to be Spider-Man. So that's really dangerous. It can be fatal. So I would say if you have the option to not get a mesh lid, please try. I understand it's super convenient to do that. Um, and if you do, please look into my method on how to make that safer for your spider. 
Um, I will link to that below. The next thing you're going to need is substrate. So if you have a ground drilling tarantula, you're going to need a lot of this because you don't want them to climb. So you're going to want to fill the tank about two thirds of it with substrate. And as far as substrate goes, um, coconut fiber is really good. You can also use topsoil. Um, some people, if they have a tarantula that they need to keep the moisture in the tank, they use moss. And as far as getting these materials, I do not suggest that you go into your backyard and just start collecting dirt or moss or whatever. Um, because whenever you do something like this, you risk contaminating your spider's tank or putting them in jeopardy. You don't know if there's any pesticides or parasites that you might be introducing into your tarantula's tank. So it is best to buy it um, when you can. Do not go outside and get your own stuff. <laughs> um, the next important thing is you're going to need a water dish and you do not necessarily need a special water dish or whatever. They can be like, it can get a little bit expensive if you're looking for something fancy. But a lot of people just use containers or little jar lids or bottle caps and that is perfectly fine. To be honest, your tarantula is probably going to turn the water dish over put dirt in it. Um, so it doesn't need to be anything fancy. My own spider um, currently loves putting her feet in her water dish instead of drinking the water. So yeah, you don't have to get fancy. And then you want to get into making a hide for your tarantula and putting decor in the tank. So you can get really fun with this. I've seen people put toys in their tanks um, or decorations, but what they really need um, as far as keeping things most basic is they do need a place to hide so like a, a hollow log or you know a little um, half of a pot or something something that they can hide in and they can have like a safe dark place because tarantulas love that and if you have a tree dwelling tarantula you will also need um, some bark or some branches um, or something that they can like climb because um, you know it's really important for their health is that they can move around like how they would in the wild so you want to make sure that they do have um, things to climb on. And now as far as things to climb on, like I said before, don't go out and get sticks from your backyard or go get plants from your backyard. Um, please make sure that if you are using live plants that they are safe. Um, you might want to go to like an exotic shop for this. Um, but generally I think that decorative plants and branches and stuff like that are much safer for your trench line. You, you can just kind of make sure that you're not introducing anything harmful into the tank. Another thing you want to think about that tends to be kind of a afterthought for a lot of tarantula owners, but it's really important, is to research your spider's needs. So while a lot of tarantulas might um, be fine with room temperature, like my spider for example, and she's a uh, Chilean rose hair, a lot of tarantulas, especially the more exotic ones, they do have certain humidity and temperature requirements. So what you might want to invest in is some like temperature uh, and humidity measurement tools um, just so you can kind of see what the humidity in your tank is like and make sure the moisture levels are okay. <clears throat> and um, I do suggest that in colder months a lot of tarantula owners have challenges with keeping their tarantulas at a comfortable room temperature without like blasting their heat. Um, <clears throat> you can invest in a space heater um, they make really safe ones now that you can leave on all day and they will turn off if they get too hot or they get knocked over, so that's great. Um, I can definitely leave a link to my own space heater method below, um, which has saved me a lot of money um, and it's worked out really well for me and Spidey. And I do caution, caution against um, heating mats or, or heating lamps or anything like that as far as temperature goes because they can be very dangerous for tarantulas. Um, and there have been a lot of reports about their tarantulas being burned to death and it's just hard to regulate the temperatures on those things. Um, so you want to be wary of that. So yeah. And then something that I found that really helps with the tanks and as far as cleaning the tanks and getting them set up is to have two spare smaller containers that can either serve as food storage or they can also be holding places for your tarantula while you're cleaning their tank if you only have one tank. Um, those have been really helpful for me as far as transporting Spidey, um, holding her while I'm cleaning her tank. Um, they're just like little critter keepers that you can buy on Amazon. They're super cheap. 
Um, but you can also use like a Tupperware with holes in it or something like that. You just, you know, you want to make sure that you have extra containers in case you ever have to go chasing after a spider and catch them, or you have to store their food, or you need to take them somewhere. So um, those are always good to have on hand. And now as far as baby spiders or slings, it's basically the same type of things. They, they need the same stuff that an adult tarantula would, but on a much smaller scale. So while you might not need a whole tank for your little spider right now, um, you can keep them in like small deli cups. Those are really great. You can order them in bulk if you are getting a ton of slings. They're super cost efficient. Um, and you can also put them in like little plastic vials. You just want to make sure that you poke holes in the top so they have ventilation and air. Um, and instead of a water dish, you can use like a little bottle cap or some people for their really small spiders, they even um, use the underside of a, the hollow side of a Lego because it's so tiny. Um, but yeah, you're going to need the same stuff. You're also going to need substrate and small, um, you know, a small place to hide and stuff like that, small decorations. Same stuff, just much smaller. And now I know that's a lot to think about at first, especially if you're super excited and you just like want to jump on it and get your, your tarantula without having to think about all that. And buying all those products can get a little bit expensive just because they're not packaged. So if you just want to fast track everything, um, I have seen a few things on Amazon where um, there are complete starter kits for both tree dwelling and ground dwelling tarantulas. So I'm going to link to those um, just so you have them. It's I find it, I think it's more cost efficient. I've never bought any of them, but um, their price is much better than the price that I spent <laughs> um, to buy everything separately and set up Spidey's tank. So um, I think that could definitely help a few people out if you're strapped for cash and you just want to like order it all in one click. So I will definitely link that below and also in the blog post that's accompanying this video. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. If you've made it to the end, I know that that was a lot. Um, please check out the accompanying blog post because I provide images and links to the products that I've mentioned um, that can help you get more of an idea of just what I'm talking about and give a more in-depth explanation. And also, if you are interested in learning more about tarantula care or anything about tarantulas, I have a very in-depth tarantula guide out, and I will link to that below. And I go way more into tarantula care and how to make good enclosures. And if you are already set up and you are looking for just some fun stuff to do for your tarantula to make their tank more interesting, please check out my video on tarantula enrichment. I will link to it. Um, it's a really good video to watch after this one just so you can see... Um, what kind of things that tarantula owners do to um, keep their tarantulas interested and happy. <laughs> so um, thank you for watching, and I will see you again soon next week on Tarantula Tuesday. Bye.